Welcome to episode 5 of season 8 of the Gospel of Games podcast. Today I'm going to try and offer up a little bit of encouragement and talk about burdens, how to carry them, and when to let them go. Let's get after it. Thank you for joining me for the Gospel Everything's Podcast. I'm your host, Richard Storm Norman, here to tell you everything I know and some things I highly suspect. Today I've been dealing with some stuff lately and feeling really discouraged, so I thought I would attempt to do a topic to encourage all of you and hopefully myself in the process. Today we're going to talk about burdens, what to do with them, how to carry them, all that good stuff. I'm sure we all got some that we're toting around. Before we get into that though, how are you doing this fine Florida Monday? Almost fall. Almost fall. Of course, someone needs to tell the weather that. Let's see what we got here on the computer screen. 91 degrees currently. And it hasn't rained a couple days. Been a couple days since it rained. Uh, I guess if it was going to rain today, I'd probably do it already. But about another, well, I know fall starts in September, like, 20th, something like that. But it don't really start kicking in in Florida till like, Halloween. <laughs> end of The end of October is about usually when we start seeing some cooler weather. And by cool, I mean, like, highs in the 80s. Uh, but, yeah, fall's coming. Football season this weekend. I'm going to the Gator game. Going to to uh, see Friday Night Smackdown Friday because it's in town. My wife wants to go. Then Saturday we're going to the Gator game, so it's going to be a busy weekend. Also a four-day weekend because I took Friday off and I got Monday off for Labor Day. So I was thinking we were going to cancel the podcast next week because I'm going to be so busy. But I should have time to put a podcast together next week. We'll see, though. Stay tuned. We'll see how tired I am because... <laughs> Smackdown starts at 8, the game starts at 7.30, so I'm not getting home till after midnight, probably both of those times. Uh, but it'll be fun, it'll be fun. Fall semester for school is about to start, I think it starts on the 14th of September, I'm not entirely sure, I'm pretty worried about it, because you got five classes, and that's pretty hard to keep up with five classes, plus do a podcast and a Sunday school class. This year we got six classes. We got an extra one. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to them. I'm just, like, worried about how I'm going to squeeze all that together and uh, still have a healthy marriage. <laughs> but we'll we'll see. All I got to do is get through one more year. I'll be done. Bibles I've been using this week, same old. The Allen, the turquoise I took to church again. I just couldn't tell it no. I just couldn't tell it no. That's about it. That's about all I've been using. I know I've been pretty boring lately on my Bibles, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know? I like all my Bibles, but certain ones just stick with me for a while. And uh, I like using them. I've noticed I haven't. I've been using these premiums. The Allen, the uh, Brevere Blackface, the Cambridge Turquoise, and the Skylar Canterbury. And I haven't been using too many of my CBP Bibles. But that's going to change soon because we're going to do a Bible study coming up in the next few episodes. If you got any topics you'd like me to cover, once again, don't forget to drop them down in the comments. Or send me an email. Uh, I'll read them faster if you drop them in the comments. I'll forget to check my email. I used to have it on my phone until I got this new phone. And I just don't ever get around to adding it to my email app. I need to do that. But if you got a topic, feel free to drop it in the comments. And uh, that's all we got for the opener. Let's get into the main topic, burdens. So lately I've been feeling a little down in the dumps. You know, sometimes the burdens of life, they get heavy. 
and they wear down on you. I'm in a valley at the moment. I'm not going to go into the details because, uh, you know, I don't want to give you all my personal problems. But going through a valley at the moment, and uh, the, the bad part is I know it's just beginning. It's just beginning. Uh, but I'm not going to go into details like I said. But I need some encouragement. And some of you might also need some encouragement. So that's my goal today. Last time I tried to do something encouraging. Didn't really turn out encouraging. Although it might have been encouraging to you. Uh, but we all have burdens we carry. And that is a part of the Christian life. Uh, I was telling my Sunday school class recently that Christians have all the same problems that an uh, unsaved person would have. You know, we got bills to pay. Uh, we got to keep our employers happy. Uh, we got health concerns sometimes. You know, I just had COVID recently. Uh, some of y'all got kids y'all got to take care of. You got to worry about them as well. But as Christians, we also have added burdens, you know, stuff, stuff that the world just doesn't deal with. You know, the worldly parents are not concerned with their children's salvation. You know, you probably, we talk about at church all the time, your children got a drug problem. Drug the church every time the doors are open. <laughs> worldly kids don't have that problem. Worldly parents aren't dragging their kids to church because they're concerned with whether or not they're going to get saved. They want them to get If you're, you know, obviously if you're saved and you have kids, you want your kids to get saved. And you do everything in your power to make, put them in an environment where that's possible. But the worldly person is not concerned with their drug addicted brother or their alcoholic father coming to Christ. They might be, you know, wanting them to get sober and off drugs or get sober and off alcohol, but they're not worried about a lasting change uh, to where they come to Christ. The worldly person is not concerned with battling their flesh. You know, they're not worried uh, about living a holy life. They just go out and do whatever they want. They're not worried about spiritual warfare because they don't know it exists. They don't believe it. Uh, they don't even think about it like the Christian does. So, you know, I would never tell someone that becoming a Christian will make their life easier because it actually adds their load. you got all your regular problems, like I said, bills, health, all those things. And then you got the added burdens of uh, praying for people's salvation, trying to lead people to Christ, trying to live a holy life, uh, battling your own flesh, things like that added on top so I'd never tell someone that becoming a Christian is going to make their life easier but I would tell them uh, it's go you're not going to do it alone you don't have to bear these burdens by yourself not all burdens are meant to be removed as Christians we should always have a burden for someone's salvation uh, but some burdens are temporary and some birds we can carry too long, longer than we need to carry them. Uh, so we need to be able to recognize what burden is what. What burden is a burden that we we just have to carry. Uh, like worrying about people, oh, well, my kids are saved, my wife's saved, mom and dad's saved. Okay, well, there's other people around you that probably ain't saved and probably need saved. Uh, so there's always that burden. But there are, at the same time, there are burdens that you don't necessarily need to carry. You need to give them up and let God deal with them. Uh, but a good illustration is the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Right there in the first verse it says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And that's saying, you know, God, that saying we've heard, countless times you see it posted on social media all the time i saw my cousin actually post or say it the other day god will never give you more than you can carry and that's just complete baloney it's baloney god will absolutely give you more than you can carry i've said it before he certainly will he'll give you more than you can carry when he needs to remind you 
that you need to rely on him. You know, uh, if you're just going along doing the bare minimum and it's, everything's hunky-dory and just fine, you might get to the point where you're like, well, I can, I can handle this. This ain't no problem. And then why would you rely on God? You start relying on yourself. Oh, I got this. I got this. And that's why every now and then God will drop another hundred pounds on you and be like, oh, you got it now? How about now? And the whole point of that is to teach you, okay, I need to rely on God because I can't do, I can't do everything on my own. You know, some people may be carrying a burden simply because God is waiting for you to give it to him. Palm, palms. I just said palms. Psalms 55.2. Okay, apparently I wrote that down wrong. Okay, I meant Psalms 55.22. 22. It says, Cast thy burden... Upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. You know, in a relay race, uh, I'm sure some of y'all know what a relay race is, especially, you know, the Olympics just happened. Uh, but in a relay race, you got people out there, and you run, pass the baton to the next person, they take off running. Uh, but that person can't run the next leg of the race until you give them the baton. Now, verse there said, God will sustain you. Well, he can't sustain you until you give him that burden, until you pass that burden on, give it up to him. Let him have it. James 4, verse 2, it says there, You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, you fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. I know the context of that verse is a little, a little bit different than what I'm talking about uh, today, but uh, the principle remains the same. You have not, because you ask not. Sometimes you've got a burden you're carrying around you, that might have been temporarily placed on you, and you should have long since gave it up to God. Be like, hey, Lord. Because he put it on, like I said, he put it on you to let you know. <laughs> to remind you, you need, you need to rely on him. And sometimes you need to swallow that pride. Kill that pride. And just offer it up to him. Be like, God, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this by myself. That's what he's waiting on. So what about permanent? Permanent burdens. Burdens that every Christian uh, just has to carry. Well, you're supposed to share them. You're not supposed to carry them by yourself. Let's go to Matthew 11, 28 and 30. 28 through 30, I mean. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So, uh, for some of y'all folk that might live in the city, a uh, yoke is what you put on an animal to attach it to something else, whether it be a horse, ox, whatever it is, mule, whatever it is you got. Uh, it's kind of, I guess there's probably different, you know, they look different, I reckon. But it kind of is like a horseshoe. And it goes over their neck. And then you attach the reins and whatnot to it. And uh, you attach. I'm not going to lie and tell you I'm an expert. <laughs> I'm just going off what I know I've seen. Uh, but it attaches the an attached to the thing you're pulling. And the animal. You know what I'm saying? I know it. It ain't. It don't sound like it's coming out of my mouth correctly, but I guess if you can Google it, I guess you'll you'll get the idea. But it is it attaches to the animal's neck there, so that the weight will be on their shoulders, and they can pull the plow, carriage, cart, whatever it is that they're pulling. 
uh, this makes it a whole lot easier to control the animal. Now, obviously, having two animals pulling your plow or whatever uh, is going to get the job done a lot better. It's going to be a lot better on you, a lot better on the animal. Jesus is telling us that he is willing to help you with the heavy load. He's saying, take my yoke. My yoke is light. It's easy. And he seems to be indicating that he's willing to bear the brunt of the load there. Because it's talking about, uh, verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, if you're both in a yoke, it should be the same for both of y'all. But Jesus is saying, oh no, mine's light. Because he's, he's going to carry more of the load, because he's able to, than you. So not only are we supposed to share our burdens with the Lord, uh, Jesus said he'd help us with them. And I, we can make arguments all day, I don't know, uh, about what, the, what that passage is pertaining to and eschatology or whatever you want to get into but i do believe in double application and i think that can be applied there i think the the thought the thought behind it regardless of what it's technically referring to still applies but we're also supposed to share our burdens with our brothers and sisters in christ our you know our church family we're supposed to share in galatians 6 2 it says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So, yeah, you know, we live in the 21st century, and uh, we have the power, you know, of social media to communicate with other Christians all over the world. But this particular thing here is best fulfilled in a local church, sure. You can get on uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is you use. And you can put a prayer request out there. Hey, brothers and sisters, pray for me and uh, whatnot. And some of them might do it. Some of them are going to tell you they're going to do it. Uh, but they're probably not going to do it. But if you go to church, y'all have a Bible. Y'all have a prayer, a uh, time of prayer, prayer request, whatnot. Like my church, you go on Wednesday night, you can give your prayer request and then everybody goes down the altar in prayer. You not only gave your prayer request, but you can literally see people down there praying for you. You can see it in action, whether you know you do it on social media. They might be praying for you, but they're probably just saying it. They're probably not really doing it. And that's not a knock on them. You know, sometimes people say, hey, can you pray for me? You're scrolling through Facebook and... You think about it, and then you kind of just forget about it later on or whatnot. That's why it's usually a good idea if someone asks you to pray for them. Just go ahead and do it right then and there. You don't have to worry about forgetting it. But the point is, the point is that we all have burdens we got to bear. The worldly ones, uh, those can be heavy. You know, i got bills to pay, don't have enough money to pay them. Or I need to do this and I don't have the money to do that. Or I got this medical problem I got to deal with. Medical problems ain't cheap. Or, you know, just things. You know, I got to deal with this down at work and it's a headache and whatnot. We got those. We got those. And we also have the burdens that a Christian might have. And uh, God has given us options that we don't have to deal with it by ourselves we're not in this by ourselves he's give us the option of taking those temporary burdens that he's placed on us just to teach us and to grow our faith and give them back give them back he's like i'm gonna get this on you and then once you realize that you need me once i teach you the lesson that you need to learn you give it back to me and uh, he's got that and for the, you know, the temporary burdens. For the permanent burdens that we all have to deal with, you know, 
loved one's salvation, uh, battling our flesh, trying to live a holy Christian life. He's saying, give it to my son. He'll help you carry it. He'll help you carry it. And also, other burdens you might give it to, you know, uh, your church family. And they'll help you carry it. And they'll help you deal with it and whatnot. And But the thing is, God has not put burdens. You know, the the people of the world, they got, you know, like, like I said, the same burdens we got. But they don't have nobody to help them with them. They don't have... They're, they're not part of the family of God, so they're not going to, you know, rely on God to help them with their burdens. They're not going to rely on Christ to help them with their burdens. They're, they ain't got no local church uh, family that they're going to ask for help in carrying their burdens. They don't have all that. And while as Christians, we have more burdens than an unsaved person. We have so many options what to do with them. You know, we can uh, uh, ask God to remove them if they're temporary uh, things. Like, you know, a bill comes up that you weren't expecting or a home repair comes up that you weren't expecting. That's temporary burden. You can ask God, hey, uh, I need some help with this, Lord. And sometimes you'll find out, like I was listening to Brother Mikey, the church yesterday's uh, testimony about a home repair, unexpected home repair he had, and a job that he had done three years. He'd been working on the last three years, and the money from it, from it finally came in right when he had this problem with the house, and he was talking about how God, God was already setting it up three years ago or however long it was, that he was going to take care of him when his burden came along. And that might be the might be the case that for you. It might be a temporary burden that you weren't expecting. And you go to God, don't you, you just go ahead and kill your pride and admit that you can't handle it and go to God and be like, God, I need your help with this. And you might find out that God's, he's already had the solution. He was just waiting on you to ask for it, you know, Sometimes you got to swallow your pride and just admit that God, God is in control, not you. I can do it myself. Not all the time. And also, like I said, he's given you Christ to lean on with your burdens. Uh, like we quoted the song earlier, we don't take everything to God in prayer. And a lot of times that's why we're walking around with such heavy shoulders. And then there's just, bar there's just burdens that we... We have to we have to bear every day, and that's where our that's why it's important to be a member of a local church, so you can rely on your brothers and sisters in Christ. And you go to church with, and you go, "Hey, can y'all pray for me? This is the situation, or I'm so and so is in the hospital, or this." And you have you know all the people of your you know, local church helping you carry the carry the burden as well. So, yep, burdens are heavy, and uh seems like the older you get, well, I guess it's kind of like this, like a trying, like a peak. I don't know, I feel like I used to not have that many, uh, and now i got some more than I had. But then, you know, once you get older, I guess it kind of starts tapering off some, a little bit. I don't know, <laughs> you tell me, <laughs> but, uh point is god don't leave you alone he don't leave you alone you ain't got to do it by yourself and if you're trying to do it by yourself you're just fooling yourself and you need to go ahead and admit to you and to god lord all right i get it i need help and he's he's already got the help the help is already there it's standing by just waiting on you to call it in so that's all i got for you today Hopefully it's an encouragement to you. For all the information you need regarding the podcast, including social media, how to support financially, how to be saved, and information on me, your host, check out the website, gospelarguments.org. If you like what you saw today, subscribe 
like, share, rate, review, follow. Those are wonderful things you can do. I can help get the podcast out there. I need to, I need to check. Uh, when we went on break between seasons, we were at 360 YouTube subscribers, and it pretty much stayed at 360 the whole time. I think we got a couple more since then. That thing kind of climbs like, like I'll look at it on accident, really. <laughs> it's like when I'm switching my accounts or something, I'll be like, wow, we got that many? This kind of jumps up when I don't even realize it. But anyway, there's some things you can do to help. Before I go, let me ask, are you saved? You know, if you're not saved and you're carrying all them worldly burdens and, uh, God, God wants to help you with them, but first you got to get saved. In order to be saved, you must put your faith in the gospel of the grace of God. If you don't know what that is, let me read it to you. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, but which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. you got to believe that. you got to put your faith in that, and you'll be saved. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. Just believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, and you'll be saved. All right, that's all i got for you this week. Y'all come back and join me next week for episode number six. Until next time, take your cross. Carry on. All right, let's do the joyful noise segment for today. And I thought we'd get back in the Redback hymnal today. And uh, I was flipping through the pages trying to figure out which one I wanted to do. And you really can't go wrong with nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus.